Today I'm cooking a dish called white noise. And now it's for the fun part. I have to use liquid nitrogen to make the strawberry pebbles. I want everything on the plate to look white. But inside the pebbles, it will be red. I just want to watch. <laughs> it's all very bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, isn't it? I've got the consomme gel. And when I drop that in, liquid nitrogen, it creates a natural form of a pebble. What's happening, Reynolds? Uh, making strawberry pebbles. Strawberry pebbles? This is probably a pretty important time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us to go away, or are you good? No, nah, it's pretty all right. <laughs> Mate, you look like you're working like a demon over there. It's been pretty... I forgot how it feels like. <laughs> Just got to put on the plate. Nice. All right, thanks, guys. I just feel a bit nervous because I've got a lot of pressure on my shoulders. For me to come back into the competition, I've got a reputation to maintain. I have multiple businesses running with my brothers. There's only one unity pin up for grabs for this whole entire season, and I really want it. I just need this dessert to be perfect. Reynolds, tell us your dish. Uh, it's a dish that's revolved around the color white, jasmine gelato, coconut frozen ganache, uh, white chocolate crumble, strawberry gum jelly, yogurt gel, and little white pebbles with a strawberry consomme gel. It is so elegant to the eye. It's so technical. It's almost like being in a science lab. It looks breathtaking. It makes you want to dive into the bowl. It's very rare we see a dessert looking so beautiful so early on in this competition. Thank you. Is there a particular element that you would invite us to break first? Go for the little white pebbles. Okay. That absolutely gorgeous. It's almost a shame to ruin it. Wow. It does taste as good as it looks. In fact, it tastes actually better, which is very hard for dessert when so pleasing to the eye. I have to pitch myself, Reynolds, because we're at the beginning of this competition. <laughs> Congrats, my man. Thank you. All of those flavors, white chocolate, strawberries, and coconut, complement each other beautifully. Your technique throughout all the components is perfection. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. I'm going to dip it in the chocolate spray and then spray it with chocolate to give that velvety effect so I can brush it with some gold. Is this like the body of the snitch? Yes. What's really important is I don't want a smooth surface because when I'm brushing the gold, if it's smooth, it's going to have condensation and it's just going to melt off. The body of my snitch is done. It has the right texture, the layers are there, and not only that, I've brushed it gold and it's holding on. The snitch looks really impressive. Only thing left I need to do now is pair and use a sorbet and um, yogurt snow. Uh, once I have everything done, the assembly is gonna be so important because that's what's gonna make it look like the snitch. I grab a scoopful of my parent user sorbet in the middle of the plate and make a little well, a bed for my snitch body to sit on. Once I've got my snitch body, I'm getting these really fragile feather twills. That's going to be the wing for the snitch. I pipe on some ganache and then stick the twill together. I've got to be really delicate with this dish because it's so fragile. 
and also it's very temperature sensitive. It looks so good. The Harry Potter snitch has two wings, but this is an inspiration dish. I'm gonna have four and it looks better with four. Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> oh, stop it. There you go. What I think is incredible is that these wings aren't just flat out of the mold, they're twisted and manipulated so that they and crunchy. So they look like the wings and crunchy. Are and crunchy. Mm. Gosh, it's almost a shame to break it. It's special when Reynolds gets up here and he's beaming. He's beaming for a reason, because to pull that off in here, that's next level. Absolutely next level. The really bright sorbet of the yuzu and the pear fills your mouth straight away. But then I was just like searching for that tonka bean brown butter caramel, because that's just what sort of coats your mouth and makes you want to go, hang on, I want to go back for yuzu. So I think it's just, I mean, technically, we don't even need to talk about it, but it is the hardest of hardest when we talk about technique in this very kitchen. He's absolutely nailed it. This dish is a game changer. It is technical, those beautiful honey twill feathers that I loved the way they sort of bent as if they were in mid-flight. Um, and then just everything inside the ball itself, you know, the tonka bean caramel, that brown butter mousse, you know, everything worked in terms of richness, refreshment. It's triumphant. This is exactly what we live for. Mm. It's absolutely inspired cooking. A1 first class, <laughs> you know, presentation. But I've got to say, flavour, texture, balance, everything is also A1. It's first class. It's, I agree with him. It's the best dish he's ever made. As soon as I hear George say he wants something that's seductive, he wants something that's a guilty pleasure, the first thing that came to mind was the forbidden apple, something that's like to tempt you. Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit, it just makes sense. The idea I have in my head is an apple. It's got to be something that's going to be wow to the judges, so I was like, i got to go all out. Reynolds, you dream of being a high-end pastry chef, don't you? Yeah. Why are you, why are you yeah. confident? I wouldn't put you because, yes, this is the challenge. I am thinking it's going to be chocolate, but I'm, I'm really gambling on this. Uh, yeah, so, so now, now what are you going to yeah. make? I just want to try to recreate something that's like a forbidden fruit in a way. Try no, and make something look like an apple, which is quite... <laughs> OK. So yeah. you're going to use a mould that's going to be frozen and you stuffed in the middle, is that the idea? Uh, yeah, I've got um, hemisphere moulds just freezing at the moment. Yep. I'm just going to dip down to ganache and then into the red cocoa butter. Yeah. I love it. It's, I it's fantastic. It's, it's, yeah. like, it's like watching someone work in a pressure test with a recipe set by a top chef. So if you do pull it off, it be massive kudos to you. Massive. It's ridiculous 90 minutes to think of this dish. It's got a lot of elements. It's got a lot of techniques that I need to keep right. I feel really scared that it's going to fall apart, it's going to break. It's, it's a make-or-break dish. Oh. Oh, 
Today I've decided to make a difficult dish. It's going to represent the forbidden fruit. It's a frozen mousse coated with ganache and cocoa butter. Yeah, I'm freaking out because I've got so many elements. I'm really pushing this to the limit. I'm really worried about the coating of the apple because that's what's going to make it look like the apple. I want it to be smooth. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just trying to just get everything together. Yeah, I'm just a bit stressed. Are we disturbing you at the moment? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Right, I'm just going to so watch. Come on, keep uh, going. It's got edges, it's got bumps, and it's just not coating evenly. I think that one's just gone. You just got to yeah. stop, take a deep breath, take away the hurry, because yeah. you're going to stuff it up. Yeah. And your dessert relies on that visual representation, doesn't Come it? Come on, yeah. Reynolds. Thanks, guys. Don't stuff it up, mate. Come on. I'm pretty scared at the moment. In my mind, this dish looks absolutely amazing. I'm just trying to execute that well. I can't screw this up now. Good, man. Looks really good. Wow. Reynold, what's the dish? I call it the forbidden fruit. It's a chocolate mousse inside with a raspberry coulis, coated with ganache and cocoa butter. And I've played it up around with uh, some raspberries and strawberries on a chocolate soil and a raspberry sorbet. It looks <laughs> spectacular. Like, honestly, mate, that looks wonderful. Yeah. Have you done it before? Uh, no. No, uh, I was hoping to make it look more like an apple. I tried my best. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it, though. Quite. Smash it open, because I can't wait. Oh. <gasps> oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Gee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is ridiculously good. Two. Not finals week next week, the beginning of week two, and you're putting up food like this. Unbelievable. Thank you. Unbelievable. Yeah. Everything is right about it. The intensity of the raspberry and sorbet, the smoothness, the lightness of the mousse, the yeah. chocolatey richness, the cocoa butter coating, the right amount of crumb for the dish, the way it looks. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. absolutely. Perfect dish, perfect. Perfect. I'm absolutely gobsmacked, mate. Thank I you. Really am. Wow, Reynolds. Top five this morning. <sighs> Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> it's top three dish, man. Thank you. And it deserves one of these. It deserves one of these. Come here. Res respect. <laughs> yeah. Respect. I'm going to be making a salted caramel ice cream with some macadamia crumble. The ingredients today I'm going to be using the Kwondong's lemon myrtle and the macadamia. So I'm just going to keep it simple and just work my way with those three ingredients. I just feel like this, at this point of the competition, you want to do something that you're comfortable with, but also it's something that we can get you the advantage. So I'm going to do something that's my strength, and that's going to be dessert. My ice cream's in the churn up. Check it up on time, and I'm still not sure what else I need. I'm kind of missing something, and I'm playing around with whether or not I should candy some condoms. I don't know if I should use it. It's, I don't know. So I'm just going to just last minute thing. I'm going to put some quinones into a pan with some sugar and some water and let that reduce. To be in the top three, I'm taking my dish up to the judges. The only thing I'm worried about is the quinones. I don't know if I like the quinones with the other stuff. So I've made a macadamia with salted caramel ice cream. You pleased? Uh, not really. No. Oh. It's the quinones. I just, I could have left them off. The Kwondons? Yeah. Did you doubt them? Yeah. Nice, toasty, crumbly things with dark caramel. You're playing into our hands. Cooking's a really wonderful thing, isn't it? You create a dish and it plays in your mind. Will they like it? And doubt comes in. Yeah. The 
Quandons. You doubted them. I love them. I love the Quandons. I think they actually make the dish, and I like the dish because it's not sweet. Well done, Reynolds. Thank you. Thanks, Reynolds. My dish today is called Down the Rabbit Hole. And it has a Dolce Diplomat white chocolate tempera disc, uh, a chocolate spray, chocolate tree, chocolate tree branch, pistachio sponge, matcha soil, a yogurt foam, and a golden vanilla caramel. There's a lot going on in this idea that I have, but if I can really pull it off, I think it's not only gonna hit the brief, but the flavor's gonna be on point, and it will take you to down the rabbit hole. 20 minutes to go, and I've made my Dolce Diplomat cream, and I have my dark chocolate tube that's been tempered, vanilla caramel. Next thing I start working on is the chocolate branch for the tree. I've got my tempered chocolate in a small piping bag, and I pipe it into ice cold water. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna set, and as it's setting, I'm gonna keep piping into the branches and kind of create this 3D effect of a chocolate tree. There's not much time left. I'm going to spray the whole inside of the bowl to kind of give that dark chocolate forest floor effect. <laughs> now it's time to plate up. I've got my white chocolate disc. I've got my chocolate tree, my chocolate branch. I've got pistachio sponge, and I'm piping some dolce on top of the forest floor. The aesthetics of this dish is to draw you into the Alice in Wonderland. To make it more special, I put a little bit of dolce cream on the chocolate tree branches. I've got some shiso flowers from the garden and I start placing them onto the tree branch and it's looking really cool. And it's really fun to kind of cook with inspiration from a fairy tale. I've got my yogurt foam cooked in nitrogen and I think it looks incredible. It's a caramelized white chocolate diplomat with pistachio sponge, matcha crumble, dark chocolate, and a vanilla caramel with lime yogurt. Ready? Yeah, do your sauce. We're ready. I've got my hot caramel. It needs to be hot enough to melt through that chocolate and give that rabbit hole effect. I'm looking down at my plate. I'm looking at the judges. I'm looking back at my plate. And I'm just thinking to myself, please, it needs to melt it. <laughs> and there it is. <gasps> There's the rabbit hole. My dish is there, right there. It's down the rabbit hole. I'm just really stoked that I pulled this off. Well, as per your usual specifications, it is beautiful to look at. However, um, let's hope it tastes the same. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank man. Thank you. I mean, wow. Look at that. <laughs> we asked for fairy tale, and if that's not fairy tale in a bowl, my goodness. I mean, it just looks so magical. All right, we're on. Thank you. I mean, even the twigs are brushed in gold dust. Right. From the top, theatre, 
big tick for me. Like, really got the, the idea of the challenge. But actually going into the dessert, the diplomat is so rich. The dark chocolate's got that bitter edge to it. The yogurt snow's got the acidity, and the caramel sauce is just rich in an edge of saltiness. Just, it's hard to fault as, a, as an overall dish. So today I'm going to be making a three creme noir, which is a vanilla, coffee, and hazelnut cream. So three different flavors, so when you take a spoonful, it's different every time. That will be covered with a coffee and hazelnut crumble, and on top will be a couple of mousse rocks. This whole concept of the dish looks like earth. It'll take you to a feel it's earthy, but at the same time, it'll be amazing and delicious. So, Reynold, what did you make? A uh, pile of dirt and a couple of rocks. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. So what flavour is your pile of dirt and a couple of rocks? <laughs> uh, so it's chocolate, hazelnut, coffee and vanilla. Um, I've got that as a creme on the bottom. And I've got hazelnut and coffee crumble on top and a frozen chocolate mousse. Cool. Reynolds. I love it. I really love it. I felt like I was in a little, you know, pile of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. Gee, he's done well again, hasn't he? He's good. The apple pie filling is going to have spices. It's caramelised. It's kind of like a stewed apple and a cinnamon parfait. I want texture through this dessert, like a crunch. I want something where you can chew on as well, which is going to be the ginger snap. I also wanted to do something that's very theatrical to finish off my apple pie. <laughs> I'm just working so hard. I'm running, I'm sprinting actually, and I've got everything everywhere. Sarah Claire, she's calm, she's cool and collected, and my brain is in 50 different places. Apple pie, flavor-wise, is very simple. So I'm thinking about three, four components. But since it's a very simple dish on its own, how can I elevate it? I really want to do something that's very theatrical, something more unique, and that's blowing sugar. Reynolds blowing bubbles. What's he doing? Blowing bubbles. What's happening? Yeah, I'm right now. I'm going down too. I've never, I'm I've never seen a sugar ball blown live. No pressure. Why are you all here? No pressure. It's a lot of pressure. No it's pressure. Like... That's killing me. This is my first live sugar ball experience. This is just too... This is a lot of pressure. Come on, mate. <laughs> I'm feeling really stressed. Wow. They're watching me. I'm still just pumping away. I'm trying to ignore them. I'm just trying to stay calm. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. This dome has to be perfectly done. There's no room for error. Don't feel any pressure at all. I gotta get the sides right so I can fit over the cinnamon parfait. It has to be beautifully shiny. It's gonna be see through and it can't be too thick. That's it. I'm gonna cut it and then cut a hole and it's gonna sit above the, um, the parfait. Yep. He made that look very easy, didn't he? Didn't he? Amazing. Oh, it works. It finally freaking works. I've got one beautiful sugar dome, and now I set that aside, and I've got to be really, really gentle with it. Yeah, there are mine. Holy smoke. Reynold, I cannot believe what you've got done in an hour. What have you made? Uh, it's my take on a American apple pie. Spiced apples with cinnamon parfait and uh, brown sugar snap. That looks absolutely incredible. I mean, guys. I can't do that kind of sugar work. It's just, I don't have it in me. I don't have the patience, <laughs> Reynold. And I admire you not only for doing it, but for doing it here in the MasterChef kitchen. It's a credit to you. Well done, mate. It's almost a shame to demolish this. Oh, don't act like you don't want to do it. There you go. <gasps> <laughs> Oh, 
When you put that down, you can't help but just be amazed. Like, what you did then was amazing. You've done a rental to the apple pie. It tastes like an apple pie. The flavours are there. It's a wow of a dessert, that's for sure. Yeah. You've managed to distill the soul of an apple pie into something that is just ephemeral art. It was absolutely gorgeous to behold. To dig into the flavours, apple, cinnamon, ginger, you've kept a lot of fun in it as well, which I think is a, a wonderful thing. Well done. Great texture on that parfait. Apples cooked beautifully, great level of flavour. I'm not a cinnamon lover by any means, but I actually really enjoyed that. And the sugar work, it's just visually unbelievable. Well done. Thank you. Berries and cream. Berries and cream. Berries? Yeah, berries and cream. How many trays? Grab it, two. It's obvious who the dessert master is in this uh, competition, which is Reynolds. Uh, I've got meringue, shards. We've got two types of frozen uh, cream. He's my lieutenant on desserts. I really want to make a special dessert today with berries and cream and an Anzac crumble. My plan is to use meringue shards to pull it all together. If that's the best produce, that's the best of Australia, I'm happy with it. I've got a great team here with me. I'm going to do my absolute best. We're going to do our absolute best, and I think it's going to be a cracking dish. What he's doing on dessert, mate? Everything is done. I'm not sure. I might need more meringue, so... I'm not worried. You know, we've got Reynolds, and he's our secret weapon. He's my boy. He's my boy. Our dessert today is a Berry Melba, which is Reynolds' version of a classic Aussie pav. Loads of berries and cream to go with crispy meringue shards. Christina, OK, you're going to do this. Yeah, you're going to do the crumble. OK, two big spoonfuls. Keep it tight. Yeah. Presentation is really important. Just over on the top. The main elements on the plate are the lemon cream, some crumble, and the berries, and some meringue. Just break them apart. Make sure you can try to cover it just a little bit. That's enough. That looks awesome. Looks amazing. The meringue is a key part of the dessert. We're going to use it to pull all the key elements all together. Gentlemen, this is a, our take on a, a berry melva. So it's fresh berries, meringue shards, and a crumble, yeah. Hope you enjoy it. Brilliant. Done. Thank you. It looks it great. Looks, it looks fresh, it smells amazing. It looks spectacular. And, you know, Reynolds had a big play in this dish, and yeah, yeah. you can just tell he's got a touch, hasn't Brilliant. he? It just smells beautiful. I want to eat it. <laughs> Go on, man, let's. <laughs> Forget just the, the way it's been plated up, which looks super modern, super beautiful. But just that idea of not just throwing berries and cream on a plate, but adding that little bit of passion fruit that's going to bring some savoury note to it. The, the, the fresh mint, the little bit of, little bit of lime zest on, on the meringue. They, they've given us a dish where native produce is as it should be, and everything else just you know, enhances it. Wonderful. Very happy with that. This is for the dakwa. I am doing a lot of elements in my dessert. And I'm whipping up my ganache for the cherry ripe. Oh my god, you're crazy, Reynolds. Did he just whip ganache? Yeah. I didn't even know you could whip ganache. Whip ganache, it's a really light in consistency and flavour. It's kind of like chocolate mousse. What's the red syrup? Uh, it's cherries and blood limes. I have to churn my gelato using nitrogen, and it makes a really silky smooth ice cream. And also make a yogurt snow. So this is really going to be very tight. But I always want to push further and further, because as the competitions get harder, I need to put up dishes that are more impressive. Nice, Reynold. This is my first time in round two elimination court. And if I was to go home today, I'd be devastated. So right now, it's crunch time. I take my meringue out of the oven. And it is cracking and breaking. It was meant to look like the Sydney Opera House. So it's not looking like what I want it to be. It's not bending. 
I'm gonna try my best to get this meringue off the silicon mat because I want to still get that onto the plate. I'm going to plate up my dish in front of the judges, so I, I will try my best to make it look like the Sydney Opera House. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Reynolds. Thank Enjoy. Well, from this angle, I can see a, maybe a deconstructed artistic interpretation of the Opera House sales. Opera House or no Opera House, it looks very, very delectable. There's no need to talk about the technique here because it is all flawless. From the wafer shards to the coconut ice cream, it's all how it is exactly meant to be. The flavour composition, and it's all exactly how it's meant to be. That coconut ice cream is, like, just give me that <laughs> in a cone and it's happy days. I mean, the, the texture of that ice cream is the bomb. The chocolate mousse is super rich, and with those pitted cherries in there, it just makes it even richer again. But then that's a yogurt, popcorn, frozen number, cuts across your palate. I loved everything about it. I'm a big fan of the cherry rive. The dark chocolate, the cherry, the coconut, all faithfully represented, but just in a way, you know, we could never have conceived it because it's come out of Reynolds' amazing brain. There's a new menu item at his restaurant. <laughs> <Yeah, right> easily. <laughs> <laughs> this must be your dream challenge. If the last round was Jessica's dream challenge, this must be your dream challenge. What? Take one ingredient and just do it three ways for you. This is heaven, isn't it? Oh, this is definitely heaven for me because uh, I love chocolate. You know I love my chocolate. So yeah. I'm going to do chocolate three ways. One's going to be with the raspberry ganache. It's going to be temp into a log yep. for another element. Yep. And it's going to be chocolate soil. Wow. So inside's going to be uh, raspberry gel, which is just from this one. Fantastic. And when you crack it open, you should just ooze out with the raspberry gel. Oh, you are pushing with it. yourself. You I'm want, definitely you want pushing. That I really do. <laughs> now, this dish, this could be the one. I hope so. I wish I had more time for this dish. That advantage would have been great. But I'm going to push myself. I'm going to push myself really hard. I'm running out of time. This is ridiculous. I've still got a lot to do. I've got to assemble the log, so I've got to move really fast. Ah, uh, come on. It's a really tricky dish because if I melt the chocolate in my hand, it's not going to work out. What's really important is to get the shape right. Oh, this is the most stressful cook I've ever done. This is insane. I've got no time here. I'm really stretching it. Good luck, Reynolds. Hey, look at that. Oh, I love that. It looks... Oh. Interesting, but weird. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, I've done the chocolate three ways. It's a chocolate log with a uh, raspberry liquid centre, chocolate raspberry ganache, and chocolate soil. Ooh. So is there something in the middle? Do we Yeah, like... just crack it open. Ooh. It is crackable oh, too, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun. Ah! <laughs> that looks great. Doesn't it look good? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah, really good. And, and in terms of interpreting the challenge, three ways, three stairways to heaven. Yeah. Three chocolate stairways to heaven. Yeah, even. absolutely. All I, I'm just smiling because it's one of those little moments, isn't it? When you smack that thing in half and it oozes that lovely red centre, really gorgeous. You're an amateur cook. You're putting up food. It is as spectacular and as restaurant quality as this. You could be in the running for the power rate. And that guaranteed immunity pin. Thanks, guys. I'm really stoked. I'm really surprised. Um, I haven't had this good feedback in a really long time. Oh, my God. They finished. I'm cooking a sweet dish utilising Tahitian lime. I've made my gelato, my curd, my granita. It's a three-component dish. 
I usually do about what, six, seven components on a dessert. This time it's only three very simple things. Simple, it can be amazing, but each component has to be perfectly balanced. There's no room for error. My granita is very acidic and I'm not sure about the balance and I'm thinking of another component to do to have some sweetness. Just do like a um, sugar blown lime or something. Yeah, blow a sugar lime. Yeah, blow a lime. I might do that actually. <laughs> if he actually does. <laughs> I'm going to add in another component into this dish, a feijoa whipped ganache with mangosteen. Freeze-dried feijoa? Yum. Feijoa is a green fruit. It's in the same family of the guava family. The flavour is a cross between guava, strawberry and pineapple. It's going to add in some creaminess to cut the acidity of the limes. And the mangosteen is going to add some texture and some more sweetness. I really hope that it's enough to get to round two. How's it going, Reynolds? Going all right. You're all right. Yeah. Just all right. What's happening? Um, I just need to taste everything. I'm just hoping that I've used enough acidity without being too sour. The green is quite acidic. The curd as well. Uh, but I've got some creamy components to kind of mellow everything out. But you've normally got like eight or nine elements. Yeah. Today you've only got four. Um, yeah. I'm really hoping I've done enough. All right. Well, let's hope you're not playing it too safe, mate. Hey. Eh? Thanks. Okay, Reynolds, tell us about your lime dish. So I've got a lime curd, feijoa and lime uh, ganache with lime granita, mangosteens and a lime zest ginger gelato. Are you happy with how much lime is in it? Uh, well, it's definitely limey, but um, in terms of balance, it's, yeah, it's come, it comes out of that. Should we test it? Let's do it. You had a short amount of time, but your ability as a chef to balance is what is the, the, the most striking part of this dish. You start off and you get that full zing, you get the burst, you get the granita, um, and then it just goes silky smooth. Pairing it back doesn't mean that it's gonna be boring, and that right there is, is testament of that. My mouth is still pinging from the lime. It's really, really bright and fresh and zesty. And um, it really, this dessert really did benefit from the richer elements because you've been thinking about balance. Um, nicely done. Thanks, Reynolds. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so smooth, Reynolds. If desserts don't work out, you can be a plasterer. <laughs> Once I've coated the meringue with the beautiful vanilla ash, I pop it into the oven at a very low temperature. I'm looking at my lemon jam. It's caramelized, it's got this beautiful texture. I've done a ice cream mix where I've steeped the coffee beans in the milk. It's got a beautiful balance of vanilla and coffee. Oh, yeah. So I get my ice cream to churn out. The next thing I need to do is the whipped chocolate ganache, which is a dark chocolate. I was told by a chef that you won't be able to do a beautiful whipped ganache within two hours. I kind of want to challenge that. I soak gelatin in water, pop it in the fridge, melt my chocolate and cream in the pot, and then blend in some cold cream. It has this beautiful velvety texture without any eggs, so basically it's like an eggless mousse. It needs to set, because if I try to whip it and it's not set, it's just going to split, and that's just going to ruin my whole dish. Usually with the whipped ganache, it's best to set overnight. Uh, it takes a long time, so the gelatin structure is definitely going to be super ambitious, but I love the challenge. I just love this adrenaline. Reynolds. Hello. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've got my whipped ganache, because I was pretty surprised it's set in time. Incredible. Yeah. My ice cream is done with 20 minutes to go, which is pretty awesome. Got these meringues done as well. I'm yet to make a salted caramel um, sauce, so that's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> we haven't looked up the entire time I've been standing here. That such is the focus of you, and I really appreciate that. So, um, Thank you. Yeah, Hope you enjoy. all right. It's not just that, I don't want to go home yet. I want to go all the way. I'm here back to win. Just got to stay focused, headstrong in the game. I want this dish to be plated in a way how they eat it. Getting that whipped ganache, getting the ice cream, which is cold, 
and the different textures that crumble. Meringue. This lemon jam, it's random. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And when you do, this is a surprise of this intensity. Oh <laughs> my word. OK, firstly, the dish name. Uh, it's chocolate with a coffee steeped ice cream, burnt vanilla meringue and uh, lemon jam. What are the elements that we've got going on here? On the bottom is a whipped chocolate ganache and a lemon jam. Brown butter, walnut crumble, walnut crumble on top with a coffee steeped ice cream and a burnt vanilla meringue. What else is that? And yeah, what are the little sort of batten Oh yeah, that's numbers. right. Yeah, those are little whipped cream with creme fraiche folded through as well and then just frozen little bits. Right. Oh, there's a whole other element yeah. I forgot to tell. <laughs> wow. understand how you can do it in the time. You know, not everything you do is perfect, but God, when, when it is, it's incredible. The no. coffee, ice cream, smooth as. The whipped chocolate is to die for. I got a hit of the jam. Wow. Just made me smile. It's just so good. And the balance is so good. The elements are so good. It is so good. Well done, mate. Thank you. That was about as close to transcendental dessert magic I've ever seen. It's not too sweet. The coffee balances with the lemon balances with everything else. The textures are distinct and cohesive. You have play of temperature and texture. It's just so highly conceived. It blows my little noggin. I feel privileged to eat it, so thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. When I knew that I was going to be one of the people to stand here, I was like, I, I was excited. It's probably right up there with the dish of the competition. It's technically sound, but overall, it tastes bloody fantastic, Randall. I'm like, I'm so glad that I got to be here to eat it. Today, I'm going to try and finish a chocolate ganache dessert that I've never been able to finish before. I've got my ganache setting in the fridge, and I'm also making a rosemary flavoured ice cream to get a savoury flavour onto the plate. To make it extra special, I'm going to add some other elements, including some honeycomb. I'm worried about making my honeycomb today because I haven't got a good history with honeycomb. In the Asian restaurant challenge, I stuffed up the honeycomb twice. And it's burnt. Once I've got the honeycomb mixture to the pot, I bring that up to a temperature, which is, I think, about 160 degrees. Whisk it and put it into the silicon mat. And it's looking quite pale. I'm just hoping that it's gonna get darker. There's consequences to today's cook, so I'm gonna be the one going home if it doesn't go right. I'm feeling a bit of pressure. Check my honeycomb. Um, it's cooled down, but it's just not setting. And it's just so soft. What happened to the honeycomb? Uh, I didn't take the sugar far enough, so it's really soft. I gotta start that again. You've got 30 minutes to go. Yeah. Will you be ready? Um, hopefully, I've just gotta... Hopefully? Yeah, I, I will, I will. Yeah. I hope so too. I've only got 30 minutes to get this right. This is a dish, pretty much what I've loved cooked, and it's so I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to fail today. I'm going to try again, try again, try again until I get it right. Uh, last time I did honeycomb was an absolute disaster. I've got to make the honeycomb again. Uh, just hopefully I can get it all done. Second batch of honeycomb. I'm going to be using a thermometer this time. I'm going to make sure it comes up to the right temperature. Pour out my second lot of honeycomb. 
and it looks good, so I'm pretty happy about it. I know I've bitten off a lot than what I could chew, but I want to keep pushing. I want to just get things done. It's not over until it's over. So I'm going to add another chocolate element. I'm going to try and temper chocolate because um, I remember the first time when I got it wrong over and over and over again. It really made me really frustrated. And there's one point when I got it right, and that was probably one of the best days of my life. Today is elimination day. There's consequences. Uh, one of us could be going home. But you know, this is childhood. I'm evoking my memories, so I want to temper chocolate. I take out the chocolate and I pour it over the acetate and I spread it very thinly and I'm hoping it's gonna set. The chocolate seems to be working. Check on my honeycomb. Well, oh, that's all right. Snap it. And it works. Um, it, it's looking like what I want it to look like. Uh, this is finally in the Marshev kitchen that I've got honeycomb down. Finally, everything's slowly coming together. I'm just hoping that I can just keep it together. <laughs> Less than 10 minutes to go, and I've got to start plating up. I uh, cut a circle out of the ganache and a hole in the middle. I uh, cube up the orange jelly and put that in the center. The next thing to do is put the chocolate crumb on top. What is that? Oh, it's just the crumble. Of what? Uh, it's a burnt. So I taste the crumb and something's really missing. Oh my God. I've got to put sugar. I can't believe it. That is such a stupid mistake. It just flew over my head. Can't really do much. I'm just gonna coat this in caster sugar and hopefully that it will cover the sweetness. Yes, I've taken quite a bit of risk. Um, but you know, it's all in or, or, not, or nothing. This whole idea in the pictures finally coming together. Looks amazing, Reynolds. I'm actually really proud of actually putting something like this up. I've done dishes before in the competition that I've been happy with, but never a dish like this. I'm really proud of myself to put up a dish like this. I think I've done more than justice to my childhood memory. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. So what's the dish? So it's a chocolate ganache with orange jelly, tempered chocolate, honeycomb, and rosemary ice cream. That, that is the best dessert for me that we've had all season. It is oh. absolutely beautiful. The chocolate mousse is delicious. The rosemary ice cream is just an inspired idea. The little tumble of ingredients, which includes what, that lovely light crunchy honeycomb, those little pebbles, which is, you know, was a mistake, but in fact worked out brilliantly. And the little shards of chocolate are all just on the money. He's 21 years of age. This is phenomenal. But what's interesting is that explosion of flavours. Most pastry chefs have a sweet tooth. That's why they make pastry. He's got a sore chef's palate, which is taken into the pastry, which is rare. And that's what will define him apart from every other pastry chef in this country, his palate. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant.